despite the box score only reporting a 7 point victory for the Suns in 121 to 114 game, the Suns absolutely destroyed the Mavericks. They just got whatever shot they wanted on the offensive end and did a phenomenal job on the defensive end, pretty much accomplishing everything you would want to see against the Dallas Mavericks. We saw Luka Doncic drop 45 points on 30 shots along with 12 rebounds and 8 assists, but it was not enough to overcome the Suns. And Suns put on a clinic on the offensive end. This was a fantastic night. And if it wasn't for the Suns missing like every single wide open shot during the fourth quarter, this would have been a 30 point blowout win for the Suns because they miss literally every single wide open shot. They almost dropped below 50% field goal shooting for the first time during the playoffs. Uh, for a reason because they missed all those wide open shots and the Mavericks could not do anything against them on the defensive end although they were recording a fifth you know a top five defensive rating in the league the Mavericks just cannot guard the Suns and it was very very clear in tonight's game that this is the case I mean you can't even play guys like Davis Vertonghen and even like Jalen Green to an extent because they can't play defense uh same story with, uh, with Dwight Powell they just don't really have guys that can play defense and when you've got, got only seven guys out there, six guys out there playing heavy minutes, it is a rough night for the Dallas Mavericks. And that's that's what the Suns took advantage of. They got the Mavericks tired, you know, just killed them during the third quarter and fourth quarter, early fourth, fourth quarter, took a big lead, and it did not really matter how much the Mavericks cut into it. There's no coming back against the Suns' amazing defense, and their offense just continued to produce great offensive looks. DeAndre Ayton finishing with 25 points in this game, although he did it on 20 shots, I mean, if he did a little bit better efficiency, he would probably be on the thumbnail, but we've seen him do better uh, efficiency stuff other than 12 for 20 from the field. Devin Booker had 23 points on 20 shots, but 8 assists and 9 rebounds, a great night for him. Only one turnover as well. Out on top of that, 19 points from Chris Paul, 17 points from Cam Johnson really showing up in this one, 3 for 6 from 3, and the Suns take home a relatively easy victory, especially in comparison to their last round CZ, uh, series, I don't even know what I was trying to say there, series, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you only got 13 from Bridges, he had quite a few great nights uh, before this, a bit of foul trouble for him, five fouls, will be something, uh, you know, to watch going forward, considering Luka Doncic is an absolute foul mer merchant, but the Suns took care of business, and they showed how you can beat the Mavericks, because it's fine if Luka Doncic drops 45 points in your head, if you're cutting up, cutting off his other streams of offense, you know, most namely Jalen Brunson, a guy who had 20 points per game in every single game of that first round series against the Jazz, all six games, but that's a lot to do with just the Jazz being unable to defend Jalen Brunson. When you look at the Sun series, you put Devin Booker against him, and Devin Booker has now recorded his second straight defensive masterpiece against a player. Like, he was amazing yet again, and Jalen Brunson got pretty much shut out of this game with 13 points on 16 shots. Really only got any points during that fourth quarter where, I mean, the Suns didn't really try that hard. Um, they didn't need to, because, you know, they had already pretty much won the game. And you look at the rest of that team, Max Kleba had 19 points, but the Suns can really cut off that offense. I mean, he didn't have a single, he didn't make another three for that second half, I know that. And uh, he was five for six during the first half, but I think the Suns are figuring out how to cover it up. And, you know, you can take some notes from Ima Udoka and the Boston Celtics defense that you can just have JaVale McGee play, you know, drop coverage, as long as you have good defensive rotations to cut off Kleba. And I think the Suns are going to do a much better job of adjusting to all of those pinned down threes that we saw the Mavericks open up during this game. Uh, they they made, they created a lot of open three-point looks with those pinned down screens, getting Kle Maxi Kleba open quite a bit off of those pick and pops with Luka Doncic because, you know, JaVale McGee plays in drop coverage, but it's still not enough to beat the Suns. It's just not enough offense. And just everything else put together, fast break points, um... Uh, second chance points it's not really able to defeat the Suns maybe there is one game where the Suns offense just isn't falling but this really looks like it could be a sweep just like last year's series against the, the Denver Nuggets where you have like an MVP caliber player in Luka Doncic playing out of his mind I mean Luka Doncic shot 50% from the field tonight like that's not gonna happen every game I use 4 for 11 from 3 37% that's not gonna happen every game 
and uh, 45 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. He had 5 turnovers. And the Suns can look at this and say, you know, there's not a ton of stuff the Mavs can replicate. Mike, sure, they might have an even better game shooting the 3. They shot 41% tonight. If you take away Luka Doncic's 4 for 11 from 3, they shot 12 for 27, which I think was like 45 or 46%. 12 for 27. I'm going to check that on my calculator. 44%. And, yeah, I mean, the Mavericks had some really great shooting nets against the Jazz, but the Suns are only going to be even better at adjusting to, you know, stopping those pin-down screens and those pick-and-pop threes. So, I don't really know what the Mavericks are going to do to produce enough offense to be the Suns or play any sort of defense, because the defense just wasn't there. I mean, even, uh, they did a good job. Like, if Torrey Craig was on the court, they just left him, and they were able to do a little bit better on defense, but... Otherwise, there was just no stopping the Suns. The Suns just got whatever look they wanted all night long. And if it wasn't for only a 15.5% shooting percentage on this game, the Mavericks would have gotten destroyed by many, many more points. This wasn't good defense. This is just bad shooting by the Suns. And they didn't need to shoot well to close out this game in the fourth quarter because the game was already over, you know? All they had to do was play, you know, just okay defense. You know, not try to get injured defense. And you win this and that's exactly what happened the suns took care of business and they essentially destroyed the, the mavericks through three quarters three and a half quarters so it doesn't really matter what that final box score is this was a tone setting game and i, I was talking about this uh before i got in this video it doesn't matter how close the score is if you look at what the quality of the shots the suns are producing in comparison to the maps defense and you look the quality of shots the maps offense are producing compared to the suns defense and what the suns defense are able to accomplish it is very clear what the outcome of the series is going to be and there's really only one outcome of what this series can be it's a suns series victory somehow maybe they can push it to six games but it's going to be within five games it's pretty obvious DeAndre has still never lost to Luka Doncic during his career, and yeah, that streak continues. Aiden had a, actually Aiden had, a, you know, one of his worst nights of the playoffs. Like, he just wasn't hitting those mid-range shots like he usually does, but we know DA can turn it on. He just, you know, he's feeling this the same way as the Suns. We don't need to go on 100% here. I mean, we saw it reflected in the rotations the Suns were running during this game. They weren't even playing heavy minutes to Chris Paul. You know, Chris Paul only played 29 minutes this game. DA only played 33 minutes this game. Like, they didn't need to go to heavy minutes for their top guys because you just didn't need to. <laughs> this Mavericks team was kind of a pushover. You did not need to go to your guys. You didn't need to play them too much. I mean, Bridges played 42 minutes, but I think he was just matching Luka Doncic. So, pretty much matched Luka Doncic. Booker was the only guy they really had an irregular minute count at 38 minutes. But otherwise, the Suns were just able to rest their players. Could just say Booker is just even trying to get into rhythm here. Just, you know, given he was out for a few games. Booker was one for five from the, the three-point uh, territory. And I would like to see him do better. Uh, he's producing good looks from what I recall. And uh, he's going to hit those looks. Uh, the Suns just missed a lot of wide open ones. And we know the Suns can hit them. Cam Johnson with 17 points had a really impressive game on the defensive end. And I think JaVale McGee, after initially looked like he was going to be really bad this series, considering he doesn't guard Maxi Kleba in those pops most of the time, he did a good job stepping up against uh, Luka Doncic, you know, better than even Rudy Gobert or, uh, you know, Hassan Whiteside was able to do during the last series. And that's just good enough for me, you know, if we're just able to switch uh, JaVale McGee and not get completely cooked. Uh, against Luka Doncic, that's good enough for me. I think he's going to struggle a bit more against Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie, who didn't need to do a better job of hunting him out, considering those guys are more shifty and quick. But we'll see what the Mavs choose to do going forward. There's just not a whole lot of great offensive options for them, but it will be a more interesting game if they're able to get Spencer Dinwiddie or Jalen Brunson cooking as scores and not put the entire offensive load on Luka Doncic. Because this game proved that the Suns can destroy an amazing offensive night from Luka Doncic. I saw some people even saying Luka Doncic got hurt. It looked like he suffered some sort of like hamstring or quad injury. I think it's a hamstring. Uh, but dude was running around and dunking all sorts of stuff. I mean, I don't think you can really say that he was injured at any point in this game. Because he was still killing it. Uh, of course, he's going to get beaten up and bruised when he's doing as much flopping as he does. 
and although you know some of it might be fouls it's still the action of just flopping around on the floor that's gonna get you injured a lot of the time and uh yeah he's out there playing 44 minutes with the ball in his hands for most of the game and getting targeted by the suns on defense for most of the game it is gonna be rough for him he's gonna be tired he's gonna start missing shots and it's gonna be a really tough series for him to play consistent amazing basketball and suns are gonna take advantage of that <laughs> they're gonna be targeting him all series long and he's gonna have nightmares about the suns offense and the suns defense too i mean five turnovers eight assists that's gonna be you know, one of his roughest assists to turnover games in quite a while. And shot 53% from the field, 4 for 11 from 3. I think that's got to be right around his averages on the season. I'm going to actually double check that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a 45 point night from Luka Doncic, and you're still able to just, just completely crush the Mavericks. Like, this does not feel like it's going to be much of this uh, series. No, he shot 46% from the field and 35% from three during the, the regular season. So shot, what, 5% better from the field, 1% better from three above his averages. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. You know, Luka probably plays better in the playoffs, but just Luka didn't get a ton of help. Dorian Finney-Smith got most of his points off of, I think, putbacks from what I recall. I mean, you got Reggie Bullock not really hitting threes. Finney Smith was only two for six. Bertans can't really play. Spencer Dinwiddie, I think you're going to have to rely on him to be a three-point shooter. And I don't think he's a very great three-point shooter this season, uh, series. Or uh, Last series, he was 29% from three. This season, he was 34% from three. And I don't know if you can completely rely on him. You can't rely on Jalen Green if you try to play him. And Maxi Klebo is five for eight from three, but... He's still kind of recovering from injury, kind of in a weird spot where he's not quite back. He's played inconsistent up until this playoffs, and he only got 25 minutes tonight. Had a really scary fall where, I mean, I think the issue was is that he shouldn't have held onto the rim for that long. Like he shouldn't just shouldn't have. He put himself in a really dangerous situation, and that grazing blow just physics just weren't on his side there. But at least luck was on his side, and he wasn't seriously injured by that. I'm not sure if he had to be pulled for that, but hopefully he didn't, because that's a scary, scary play. And yeah, Maxi Kleba is going to be one of their, you know, biggest offensive engines in this game, uh, this series, especially feeding off of Luka Doncic on those pick and pops and feeding him off of those pin down screens. He was amazing against the Jazz, hitting the three, and he was great in this game again, five for six during the first half. And the Suns need to do a better job of covering up him up. Got to adjust to those pin down screens. I honestly, you know, uh, the way that the Mavs run their pin down screens, especially against those kind of like empty corner sets where you don't, you only have the guy setting the pin down screen and the dude in the corner. It's a bit of an odd situation trying to guard that. So we'll see how the Suns like adjust to guard it. I'm not like an expert when looking at these types of pin down threes. So I'll leave it to the Suns, you know, management to figure that out, the coaching to figure that out. The pin downs are hard to deal with, and otherwise the Mavericks could not really create any other looks than Luka Doncic isolation shots, and that's, you know, you're going to live with Luka Doncic step back three, Luka Doncic step back three, Luka Doncic dribbling the ball for 18 seconds, then shooting a mid-range shot. Like, the Suns are going to live with that, they're going to attack him all night on defense, they're going to let him dribble the ball all night long in offense, and even if he does his foul merchant stuff where he's out there trying to draw all sorts of contact, He's either going to hurt himself, just feel the physicality of the game more, and just wear himself down even more. You're going to live with those free throws, even if, you know, Mikhail Bridges is in a situation where he's got five fouls in the game. That's five times where Luka Doncic got hit and is, you know, he's going to be feeling those blows. It's going to be a rough series for Luka. Luka's an amazing player, but I don't think he can hold up to, you know, drop like a 60-point game to win this. Uh, this is a very possibly... The series where we see the point, the single points in a game record broken, that uh, Michael Jordan record broken. And I'm not exactly sure if that's going to be in a win for Luka Doncic in very Devin Booker-esque style. It might be in a loss, but we'll see. Luka Doncic should continue to shoot the ball like he shot 50% from the field. He was getting good looks, especially during that fourth quarter where the Suns kind of let up the gas, tried not to foul too much. But yeah, I mean... 
Luka Doncic shooting that many shots, he's going to be in a rough situation. And that's really where it seems like the Suns are going to, you know, win the series. Because Luka Doncic played his heart out. He potentially got injured. And the Sun, the Mavericks got destroyed, you know. They still couldn't produce that much on offense. And defense was a, a pain. If the Suns can continue to put the Mavericks in situations where they can guard the pick and roll with Jess, Bridges, and Aiden, it is going to be it just, it's going to feel like an impossible series for Luka Doncic to win because there's just not a consistent way for him to beat that pick and roll defense, even with trying to open up like some pin down screens on pick and pop action like they were doing late into the game for Maxi Kleba, even with DA on the floor and not JaVale. Like still, it's it's just rough. That's still a lot of work to get a three point shot that Maxi Kleba is hitting off of motion off of setting a screen and it's just like or off of uh, coming off of the screen after setting a screen and if he's going to hit that consistently i uh, sure but i'm sure he's not going to hit 10 threes in a game he's not going to suddenly like break the playoff record for threes in a game and uh, that's just the issue of the mavericks they can't produce enough offense to be the suns just like the pelicans they can't produce enough offense and the suns are even more dominant to the series offensively than they were against the Pelicans. So it feels like this is going to go to, it feels like it could be if Suns and four, you know, just like that chance during the end of that game, Suns and four seems very possible. And maybe the, the Suns have just jinxed it. Suns fans, it's going to go to five games, but we'll see. Can the Mavericks adjust? I mean, they were top five defense, but they just don't have the personnel to stop the Suns. Reggie Bull Bullock, I didn't know it was not Bullock. I thought it was just Bullock, but apparently it's Bullock. He can't really, like, he's their secondary defensive option who's either guarding Chris Paul or Devin Booker when Dorian Finney-Smith is not, and he can't really do much, <laughs> you know? It is going to be tough. Luka Doncic looks like their second best defender, and that is just, that is not good. <laughs> Anyways. That's about it. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end and you aren't already subscribed, maybe scroll down and hit subscribe and help me out. I'm getting ever closer to 1700 subscribers. I think we're at like 1670 ish. So let's keep pushing to that goal. Probably could get to 1700 before the NBA finals. So every subscriber really counts in getting me to that goal. So yeah, maybe scroll down and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Good.